a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Old English Old English, or Anglo-Saxon, is the earliest historical form of the English language. Spoken in England and Southern and Eastern Scotland in the early Middle Ages, it was brought to Great Britain by Anglo-Saxon settlers probably in the mid-5th century, and the first Old English literary works date from the mid-7th century. After the Norman Conquest of 1066, English was replaced, for a time, as the language of the upper classes by Anglo-Norman, a relative of French. This is regarded as marking the end of the Old English era, as during this period the English language was heavily influenced by Anglo-Norman, developing into a phase known now as Middle English. Old English developed from a set of Anglo-Frisian, or Anglionic dialects originally spoken by Germanic tribes traditionally known as the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes. As the Anglo-Saxons became dominant in England, their language replaced the languages of Roman Britain, Common Britannic, a Celtic language, and Latin, brought to Britain by Roman invasion. Old English had four main dialects, associated with particular Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, Mercian, Northumbrian, Kentish, and West Saxon. It was West Saxon that formed the basis for the literary standard of the later Old English period, although the dominant forms of Middle and Modern English would develop mainly from Mercian. The speech of eastern and northern parts of England was subject to strong Old Norse influence due to Scandinavian rule and settlement beginning in the 9th century. Old English is one of the West Germanic languages, and its closest relatives are Old Frisian and Old Saxon. Like other Old Germanic languages, it is very different from Modern English and difficult for Modern English speakers to understand without study. Old English grammar is quite similar to that of Modern German, nouns, adjectives, pronouns, and verbs have many inflectional endings and forms, and word order is much freer. The oldest Old English inscriptions were written using a runic system, but from about the 9th century this was replaced by a version of the Latin alphabet. Terminology English, which the term English is derived from, means pertaining to the Angles. In Old English, this word was derived from Angles. During the 9th century, all invading Germanic tribes were referred to as English. It has been hypothesized that the Angles acquired their name, because their land on the coast of Jutland resembled a fishhook. Proto-Germanic also had the meaning of narrow, referring to the shallow waters near the coast. That word ultimately goes back to Proto-Indo-European, also meaning narrow. Another theory is that the derivation of narrow is the more likely connection to angling, which itself stems from a Proto-Indo-European root meaning bend, angle. The semantic link is the fishing hook, which is curved or bent at an angle. In any case, the angles may have been called such, because they were a fishing people or were originally descended from such, and therefore England would mean land of the fishermen, and English would be the fisherman's language. History Old English was not static, and its usage covered a period of 700 years, from the Anglo-Saxon settlement of Britain in the 5th century to the late 11th century, sometime after the Norman invasion. While indicating that the establishment of dates is an arbitrary process, Albert Bow dates Old English from 450 to 1150, a period of full inflections, a synthetic language. Perhaps around 85% of Old English words are no longer in use, but those that survived are basic elements of modern English vocabulary. Old English is a West Germanic language, developing out of Ingvionic dialects from the 5th century. It came to be spoken over most of the territory of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms which became the Kingdom of England. This included most of present-day England, as well as part of what is now southeastern Scotland, which for several centuries belonged to the Anglo-Saxon Kingdom of Northumbria, other parts of the island Wales, and most of Scotland continued to use Celtic languages, except in the areas of Scandinavian settlements where Old Norse was spoken. Celtic speech also remained established in certain parts of England. Medieval Cornish was spoken all over Cornwall and in adjacent parts of Devon, while Cumbric survived perhaps to the 12th century in parts of Cumbria. And Welsh may have been spoken on the English side of the Anglo-Welsh border. Norse was also widely spoken in the parts of England which fell under Danish law.
Anglo-Saxon literacy developed after Christianization in the late 7th century. The oldest surviving text of Old English literature is Sedman's Hymn, composed between 658 and 680. There is a limited corpus of runic inscriptions from the 5th to 7th centuries, but the oldest coherent runic texts date to the 8th century. The Old English Latin alphabet was introduced around the 9th century, with the unification of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms by Alfred the Great in the later 9th century. The language of government and literature became standardized around the West Saxon dialect. Alfred advocated education in English alongside Latin, and had many works translated into the English language. Some of them, such as Pope Gregory's treatise Pastoral Care, appear to have been translated by Alfred himself. In Old English, typical of the development of literature, poetry arose before prose, but King Alfred the Great chiefly inspired the growth of prose. A later literary standard, dating from the late to 10th century, arose under the influence of Bishop Athelwald of Winchester, and was followed by such writers as the prolific Alfred of Ensham. This form of the language is known as the Winchester Standard, or more commonly as Late West Saxon. It is considered to represent the classical form of Old English. It retained its position of prestige until the time of the Norman Conquest, after which English ceased for a time to be of importance as a literary language. The history of Old English can be subdivided into, the Old English period is followed by Middle English, Early Modern English, and finally Modern English. Dialects Old English should not be regarded as a single monolithic entity, just as Modern English is also not monolithic. It emerged over time out of the many dialects and languages of the colonizing tribes and it is only towards the later Anglo-Saxon period that these can be considered to have constituted a single national language. Even then, Old English continued to exhibit much local and regional variation, remnants of which remain in modern English dialects. The four main dialectal forms of Old English were Mercian, Northumbrian, Kentish, and West Saxon. Mercian and Northumbrian are together referred to as Anglian. In terms of geography the Northumbrian region lay north of the Humber River. The Mercian lay north of the Thames and south of the Humber River. West Saxon lay south and southwest of the Thames, and the smallest. Kentish region lay southeast of the Thames, a small corner of England. The Kentish region, settled by the Jutes from Jutland, has the scantiest literary remains. Each of these four dialects was associated with an independent kingdom on the island. Of these, Northumbria south of the Tyne, and most of Mercia, were overrun by the Vikings during the 9th century. The portion of Mercia that was successfully defended, and all of Kent, were then integrated into Wessex under Alfred the Great. From that time on, the West Saxon dialect became standardized as the language of government, and as the basis for the many works of literature and religious materials produced or translated from Latin in that period. The later literary standard known as Late West Saxon, although centered in the same region of the country, appears not to have been directly descended from Alfred's early West Saxon. For example, the former diphthong tended to become monophthongized to an EWS, but to an LWS. Due to the centralization of power and the Viking invasions, there is relatively little written record of the non-Wessex dialects after Alfred's unification. Some Mercian texts continued to be written, however, and the influence of Mercian is apparent in some of the translations produced under Alfred's program, many of which were produced by Mercian scholars. Other dialects certainly continued to be spoken, as is evidenced by the continued variation between their successors in Middle and Modern English. In fact, what would become the standard forms of Middle English and of Modern English are descended from Mercian rather than West Saxon while Scots developed from the Northumbrian dialect. It was once claimed that, owing to its position at the heart of the Kingdom of Wessex, the relics of Anglo-Saxon accent, idiom and vocabulary were best preserved in the dialect of Somerset. For details of the sound differences between the dialects, see Phonological History of Old English. Influence of Other Languages the language of the Anglo-Saxon settlers appears not to have been significantly affected by the native British Celtic languages which it largely displaced. The number of Celtic loanwords introduced into the language is very small. However, 
Various suggestions have been made concerning possible influence that Celtic may have had on developments in English syntax in the post-Old English period, such as the regular progressive construction and analytic word order, as well as the eventual development of the periphrastic auxiliary verb, do. Old English contained a certain number of loanwords from Latin, which was the scholarly and diplomatic lingua franca of Western Europe. It is sometimes possible to give approximate dates for the borrowing of individual Latin words based on which patterns of sound change they have undergone. Some Latin words have already been borrowed into the Germanic languages before the ancestral Angles and Saxons left continental Europe for Britain. More entered the language when the Anglo-Saxons were converted to Christianity and Latin-speaking priests became influential. It was also through Irish Christian missionaries that the Latin alphabet was introduced and adapted for the writing of Old English, replacing the earlier runic system. Nonetheless, the largest transfer of Latin-based words into English occurred after the Norman conquest of 1066, and thus in the Middle English rather than the Old English period. Another source of loanwords was Old Norse, which came into contact with Old English via the Scandinavian rulers and settlers in the Dane law from the late 9th century and during the rule of Canute and other Danish kings in the early 11th century. Many place names in eastern and northern England are of Scandinavian origin. Norse borrowings are relatively rare in Old English literature, being mostly terms relating to government and administration. The literary standard, however, was based on the West Saxon dialect, away from the main area of Scandinavian influence. The impact of Norse may have been greater in the eastern and northern dialects. Certainly in Middle English texts, which are more often based on Eastern dialects, a strong Norse influence becomes apparent. Modern English contains a great many, often everyday, words that were borrowed from Old Norse. And the grammatical simplification that occurred after the Old English period is also often attributed to Norse influence. The influence of Old Norse certainly helped move English from a synthetic language along the continuum to a more analytic word order and Old Norse most likely made a greater impact on the English language than any other language. The eagerness of Vikings in the Dane law to communicate with their southern Anglo-Saxon neighbours produced a friction that led to the erosion of the complicated inflectional word endings. Simeon Potter notes, no less far-reaching was the influence of Scandinavian upon the inflectional endings of English in hastening that wearing away, and levelling of grammatical forms which gradually spread from north to south. It was, after all, a salutary influence. The gain was greater than the loss. There was a gain in directness, in clarity, and in strength. The strength of the Viking influence on Old English appears from the fact that the indispensable elements of the language pronouns, modals, comparatives, pronominal adverbs, conjunctions, and prepositions show the most marked Danish influence. The best evidence of Scandinavian influence appears in the extensive word borrowings for as Jespersen indicates, no texts exist in either Scandinavia or in Northern England from this time to give certain evidence of an influence on syntax. The change to Old English from Old Norse was substantive, pervasive, and of a democratic character. Old Norse and Old English resembled each other closely like cousins and with some words in common, they roughly understood each other. In time the inflections melted away and the analytic pattern emerged. It is most important to recognize that in many words the English and Scandinavian language differed chiefly in their inflectional elements. The body of the word was so nearly the same in the two languages that only the endings would put obstacles in the way of mutual understanding. In the mixed population which existed in the Dane law these endings must have led to much confusion, tending gradually to become obscured and finally lost. This blending of peoples and languages resulted in simplifying English grammar, phonology, the inventory of classical Old English surface phones, as usually reconstructed, is as follows. The sounds enclosed in parentheses in the chart above are not considered to be phonemes. The above system is largely similar to that of modern English, except that have generally been lost, while the voiced affricate and fricatives have become independent phonemes, as has. The mid-front rounded vowels had merged into unrounded before the late West Saxon period. During the 11th century such vowels arose again, 
as monophthongizations of the diphthongs, but quickly merged again within most dialects. The exact pronunciation of the West Saxon close diphthongs, spelt, is disputed. It may have been. Other dialects may have had different systems of diphthongs. For example, Anglian dialects retained, which had merged within West Saxon. For more on dialectal differences, see Phonological History of Old English. Sound Changes Some of the principal sound changes occurring in the prehistory and history of Old English were the following. For more details of these processes, see the main article, linked above. For sound changes before and after the Old English period, see Phonological History of English. Morphology Nouns decline for five cases, nominative, accusative, genitive, dative, instrumental. Three genders, masculine, feminine, neuter. And two numbers, singular, and plural. And are strong or weak. The instrumental is vestigial. And only used with the masculine and neuter singular and often replaced by the dative. Only pronouns and strong adjectives retain separate instrumental forms. There is also sparse early Northumbrian evidence of a sixth case, the locative. Adjectives agree with nouns in case, gender, number, and strong, or weak forms. Pronouns and sometimes participles agree in case, gender, and number. First person and second person personal pronouns occasionally distinguish dual number forms. The definite article and its inflection serve as a definite article, a demonstrative adjective, and demonstrative pronoun. Other demonstratives are, and. These words inflect for case, gender, number. Adjectives have both strong and weak sets of endings, weak ones being used when a definite or possessive determiner is also present. Verbs conjugate for three persons, first, second, and third. Two numbers, singular, plural. Two tenses, present, and past. Three moods, indicative, subjunctive, and imperative and are strong or weak. Verbs have two infinitive forms, bare, and bound, and two participles, present, and past. The subjunctive has past and present forms. Finite verbs agree with subjects in person, and number. The future tense, passive voice, and other aspects are formed with compounds. Adpositions are mostly before, but often after their object. If the object of an adposition is marked in the dative case, an adposition may conceivably be located anywhere in the sentence. Remnants of the Old English case system in modern English are in the forms of a few pronouns and in the possessive ending s, which derives from the masculine and neuter genitive ending s. The modern English plural ending s derives from the Old English as, but the latter applied only to strong, masculine nouns in the nominative and accusative cases. Different plural endings were used in other instances. Old English nouns had grammatical gender, while modern English has only natural gender. Pronoun usage could reflect either natural or grammatical gender when those conflicted, as in the case of a neuter noun referring to a female person. In Old English as verbal compound constructions are the beginnings of the compound tenses of modern English. Old English verbs include strong verbs, which form the past tense by altering the root vowel, and weak verbs, which use a suffix such as as in modern English, and peculiar to the Germanic languages, the verbs form two great classes, weak, and strong. Like today, Old English had fewer strong verbs, and many of these have over time decayed into weak forms. Then, as now, dental suffixes indicated the past tense of the weak verbs, as in work and worked. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?